I think it's like looking at people making decisions. I had a lot to do with it for me. I liked reading. I liked stories. I liked character on the page. But in movies, I've always been excited by the evidence of a performer playing a character. All set? Anything else? Ice cubes. I'll get napkins. Oh, and lemonade. Showing you the, the way that that person reaches a decision. That was the key thing that got me really excited. I started watching movies at my local 99 cent movie theater, you know, third run kind of theater. And I remember watching um, The Hot Rock with George Siegel and Robert Redford. It's a Yates, uh, Peter Yates directed this film. It's a little comic heist film. I entertained myself almost like a young mathematician might by breaking down the equation and seeing how it came together and why I was enjoying it so much. And like, yes, that's exactly, that's when that joke should happen and that's when they should get into trouble and that's when they should su succeed. And um, I recently found it on DVD and I showed it to my friend who's a younger editor. Yeah, I said, yeah, this was the one that really got me thinking like a storyteller. I didn't even know I was a storyteller yet, but I enjoyed it. After watching the Hot Rock, you know, some years passed, and I watched films closely anyway, and then I discovered the new German cinema of Herzog and Wenders and that, uh, and Fassbender. And that was an initial big uh, inspiration. I found Godard after that. Terrence Malick was very important. Like I watched uh, Bad Lions on public television one night alone in Lindenhurst where there was no one to talk to about this. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I see this amazing film, which would have a lot to do with my earlier stylistics. And Ariane Nushkin's uh, of the Cirque du Soleil and Theatre du Soleil, her film on Molière, that had a big influence on me, too. I don't know why. I mean, on some level, it was personal. Um, you know, the first episode shows a young man growing up to be creative, and his mom dies. And so I kind of identified with that, because I was, I could, you know, uh, identify. My mom died, too, at around the same age. So, um, and it kind of fisticuffs with the old man who only cares about your health and welfare, but seems to be in your way as a creative person. So uh, I identify with that. But the filmmaking and the whole thinking behind it, uh, I really began to open up to the world and, and learn more about history and politics and philosophy and stuff. Writing and editing, because they're the, uh, the things I do alone. And uh, the scheduling is not so intense. That said, I mean, I really love every part of it. Um, to work with a crew and to uh, make my decisions in real time under real contingencies uh, with the input of people who are doing different things. Lots of times you know, there might be a problem, you know, if the weather's coming, it's going to be bad. I don't know if we can continue to shoot this way. Maybe we have to shoot out of sequence and shoot this direction. And then, you know, someone in the the electrics department will have a suggestion like, well, maybe we could do this instead. Maybe look in that direction. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> There's good stuff over here. And, you know, that kind of, I love working with people that way. Um, but if I had to, I'm most at peace when I'm writing and editing. And editing can be tough because it's your footage, and if it's not providing you what you need to make the scene as good as you want it, you can only lay that at your own feet. So it becomes a real uh, moral <laughs> challenge. Uh, but luckily that doesn't happen too much in my uh, career th these days. 
don't sacrifice your own instincts too early. Uh, if you have a strong idea for a story, a strong impulse, because it's not always an idea, you know, sometimes it's just an urge. Uh, um, pursue it until it breaks, until it doesn't work anymore. And then start adjusting to the norms of storytelling, the norms, and when it becomes more of a professional thing, the norms of the business and all. If you have confidence in your, in your urge and your insights and your interests, uh, go with them strong first and let them be proven. Keep an open enough mind to let them be proven to be incommunicable because you want to communicate generally. I haven't ever met a filmmaker whose idea is to not be understood. <laughs> so, uh, but I think a lot of people give up too early because they want to be liked, which is normal. They want to be successful, you know, um, and that they, uh, you know, that, that fire in the belly should be kept for longer. Let, let outside circumstances prove that you need to make adjustments. Visual media, in particular, motion picture visual media is so much the way information gets around. And the more people can know about how it operates and how it can, in fact, deliver very confident sounding information that is a lie, for instance, is really important. Um, and a lot of times it uh, requires teaching people how fiction operates, you know, so they can tell, like, this is a movie that was made, a crafted artifice, you know, to deliver a truth, but it's not a documentary. <laughs> uh, that has gotten really mixed up in the last 30 years, and uh, I think we're paying the price for it now in lots of different ways in our society. So, yeah, a thing like this, totally necessary.